Have you lost something recently, like your keys, your watch, your wallet, maybe your knife? Not because you're bad at putting things back where they came from, but because other people are. How's it going, everybody? I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And if you answered yes to that question, I'm going to need you to smack the like button. And while you're down there, leave a comment letting me know what did you lose recently? Hopefully, it's not a piece of the sharp and shiny. Now, we're not talking about this knife today, even though it is cool. And if you want to see this video, I will link it up above. No, we're talking about what's in this box. Shout out to Cursed Earth EDC for sending me not one, but three knives that I've never laid hands on before, but I'm really looking forward to. I'm going to link his Instagram above. Make sure that you give the man a follow on Instagram because without the support and generosity of people like him, I wouldn't be able to, to do what I'm doing right now. And I'm really excited about it. Without further ado, let's check out what's in the box. Now, I know, I know there's a lot of you that watch that say, man, I don't want to see you cutting open and demolishing boxes. So we're just going to do a little quick magic and do one, two, and this is really cool. Now, if you're looking at this case, you probably already know what's in this box. So we're going to go ahead and do this one first. I do have to mention that as much as I try to avoid having to cut open packages on camera because I'm just bad at it. This tape job is almost a little aggressive. I, I mean, it. I almost feel like this is a challenge. Should I, should I open this on screen or not? Well, you know what? I guess we'll find out. Now, I know what these are, and chances are you probably already know what this is. So I'm just going to get this out of the way right now. This is a Vero Engineering Axon. Nice plush case, nice Vero Engineering patch on the outside, very cool. Now here's the thing, I love Warncliffs. I absolutely adore them. They are one of my favorite blade shapes because they're extremely utilitarian and they just feel good. I, I just like Warncliffe style blades. I've never had the chance to hold a Vero Axon in my hand, but I'm telling you that's what this is. Now, you've probably seen the Micarta version, and so have I, and you've probably seen the version that's a frame lock. This one is a liner lock. Wow, okay. So I did not expect that to actually open up as easily as it did, but it did. Um, let's try that again. How smooth is this? Very lightly. <laughs> uh, those bearings are extremely smooth. Uh, it takes almost no effort to get this to fly out. Failing that would be hard. Now, the Axon is also a front flipper, so we'll give that a, a shot. Yep, that works really well as well. Let's check it out. We got Red G10. Uh, for the blade steel, I'm not entirely sure. Is it listed somewhere? Uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do some editing magic and go ahead and, and put the blade seal up here right on the screen. So there it is. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and put the other specs on the screen as well. So yeah, there you have it. Um, as far as this is, as far as this goes, let's talk about this design language a little bit. We get a, a almost completely full body length backspacer, which I'm a huge fan of. Uh, we get some nice swedging here at the top, and that actually that's not just for looks. For those of you who don't know, the swedge at the top of blades actually helps relieve pressure when cutting through materials because you know if it if it's too thick at the top. It causes the material to spread out farther and then you can get a less clean cut. So a swedge at the top of the blade actually helps with some cutting relief. That's nice. We get this uh, rectangular shaped fuller, which I'm not mad at at all. I love reverse flicking knives, spidey flicking knives, whatever you want to call it. That's just nice. And that front flipping action, while it looks like it might not be that great because you don't get all that much sticking out there, that is really, really hard to fail. As far as being able to do, you know, this trick, I don't, I'm not good at that. I'm just gonna be honest. I'm, I'm not gonna try anymore. I'm just not good at it. 
but reverse flicking this is absolutely the way to go. I know that they've gotten some heat on these pocket clips. I'm happy to say that as of right now, it does not affect ergonomics in a negative manner. I'll have to put this in and out of my pocket a few times to see how much I like that pocket clip, but it doesn't feel too stiff. It feels nice and springy and that's pretty cool. As far as the clip itself, it is not reversible to the left side. Uh, sorry, lefties. They were not thinking of you when they designed that, but I'm pretty sure they do make a left-handed version for those of you who are left-handed. Uh, the liner is a really, really solid lockup. I'm going to get up close on that guy. Check that out. That is pretty much a, I mean, what would you call that? 60% lockup, but there's no issue at all getting that out of the way. And it's actually very comfortable to actuate. Um, that's not bad at all. Uh, as far as the lockup is concerned, there is no blade play. And when you're releasing the blade, there is no double clutch either. So if you get one of these, you have to be really careful because that blade will fall straight on your hand and it is a bit of a guillotine, but it doesn't slam home. It's almost really controlled. That's cool. Let's get another shot of that action. Yeah, that's good. And, and here's the thing. I'm not normally a G10 guy, but I've been warming up to it recently. If you wanted to get a solid comparison, let's go ahead and compare it real quick against the Spyderco Manix 2. Uh, as far as overall length, it's pretty close. It's going to have a better footprint or at least a more slender footprint in the pocket than the Spyderco. But then again, most knives do. Uh, how about up against another knife that a lot of people seem to have, the Demco AD 20.5. So it's going to be a bit longer than your Demco AD 20.5. Uh, very similar as far as the blade width is concerned, um, but a heck of a lot thicker. And that's because the Demco 8020.5 is not a very thick knife. Um, I'm okay with that because these contour G10 handle scales really allow for a good feel in the hand. I mean, you could reverse grip this. I don't know why you would. That's not really a stabbing point. And if you need a knife that stabs, this might not be the way to go. But for everybody else, that's just cool. Something else that I'm really appreciating right now is the fact that we do have billboarding, but it's on the spine of the blade. If you remember from my Beyond EDC Riverwolf video, I actually suggested that they put their billboarding on the spine of the blade because they weren't using it for much else. On this, it seems like I don't have to ask for it because it's there. You do get the Vero Engineering logo on the pocket clip and that's totally fine i don't really care about billboarding on the pocket clip that doesn't bother me whatsoever but the blade is left uninterrupted for this very utilitarian design that's obviously going to be perfect for you know opening up more boxes of knives breaking down cardboard cutting carpet whatever you use your knife for that's not stabbing this blade shape is going to do a really good job of that the action on here is something that is really really impressive to me um those bearings i'm wondering if they're ceramic bearings are these ceramic bearings i don't know the lockup is deceivingly good though and i'm also really digging the fact that you get a serial number this one is serial number 989 that's pretty cool uh, you also get a single-sided captive pivot yay that's right i just said yay i'm excited because that design is something that I like. Full length body, uh, uh, full body length backspacers. There we go. Uh, single sided captive pivot, milled pocket clip. I mean, and the billboarding is on the spine of the blade. What's not to like? So before I continue gushing about this knife, we've got other knives to check out. So let's go ahead and see what's in here. All right. And then door number two, this is the Damned Designs Banshee. Is this the Banshee? I knew he was sending me a Damned Designs knife. I wasn't entirely sure if, I remember, if I'm remembering that uh, model correctly. This is the first Damned Designs knife that I've held. And honestly, I really like it. Um, so far, so good. This is the model that has the titanium handle scales, so that's really cool. And the blade is 14C28N. There is quite a bit of oil on here, so I'm just going to go ahead and wipe that down real quick just to make sure that I'm 
not getting that all over the desk, but that is nice. Uh, on the handle scales, we're seeing a bit of stonewashed finish, which means that this is a knife that you can carry with some confidence because if you do get some dings on there, it's whatever. And then on the blade, you're also getting a nice stonewash finish, even though it's not necessarily showing up on camera very well. Let's see. It's not showing up on camera very well, but that is a stonewashed finish. So that's cool. You get the Damn Designs logo right there, and you also get this very generous finger deployment slot. It works really well. That's what's important. The jimping. Oh, thank goodness. The jimping. It goes as far as you'd need to put your thumb back there, and that's perfect. This is yet another utilitarian design because it's not a super stabby blade, even though, again, it actually feels really good in the ice pick grip. That's what I call it, the ice pick grip. Um, this is another one that is really meant for, utili for utility purposes. We've got a, I, I think this is a flat grind. That's kind of what it feels like, or it's a really shallow hollow grind. I'd be, be surprised to learn that that was a hollow grind. It, to me, it looks and feels like a flat grind. And then of course you have this tanto edge and tip uh, that's also a flat grind with a very big swedge here at the top for that cutting relief that I mentioned earlier. Uh, what we have here is a liner lock, and that liner lock is locking up pretty decently right there at what I would call about 25%, close to 30%. Perfect. That range is really good. Now, you do get a stamped pocket clip here, and I'm not entirely sure if, if this is titanium. Uh, is this titanium? Magic on the screen now. Um, looking on the inside of these handle scales, you'll see that they're actually nicely milled out for some weight relief, which is important when you have a knife with full titanium handle scales. Unlike the Axon, this one does have a reversible pocket clip, so lefties on this one, they got you covered. That blade shape is very, very interesting because while it's a tanto shape, it also looks like a drop point Tanto, that's it's weird. It's very ge geometrically confusing to my eyes, and it doesn't help that that has a weird shape for the cutout. But here's the thing. That is actually really, really good because you get enough leverage in there to be able to flick it out with some confidence. This is also running on bearings. Uh, no issue, nice and drop shut. And of course, it is also a flipper tab. Let's see how good that flipper tab deployment is. Yeah, very good. Uh, the detent breaks free. Uh, it, it's going to be hard to fail this one. Now, just like with the Axon, this one is indeed a single-sided uh, captive pivot. So good on them. I, I really appreciate that Damn Designs has designs that are affordable. Uh, these knives are not on the super expensive end, but I'm telling you right now that it's passing the eye test. It's going to take a while for me to be able to do a grail or garbage on these because it takes roughly, you know, 10, 10 to 14 days for me to get a solid opinion. So far, I'm really enjoying the contouring on the handle scales, the extra milling, the extra little cutouts here and there, and the jimping on the spine of the blade, which is fantastic. That's enough jimping and it goes exactly where your thumb should go. You do get a sharpening choil right here. I'm going to call that a sharpening choil and not a finger choil or a finger cutout because I don't really, I wouldn't suggest putting your finger there. If you have regular man-sized hands, um, you could. I just wouldn't suggest it if you're going to be jostling anything because your finger is going to run up on that blade and then you'll regret it. So yeah, I just wouldn't suggest putting my finger there. As far as the lockup is concerned, uh, there's no blade play up, down, left, or right. There's also no double clutch. The centering on the blade is really good as well. And you do get a backspacer that allows for a lanyard, but it's not the longest backspacer I've ever seen. So it's kind of a token back slash bottom spacer. Yeah, uh, that's okay. Not every knife needs to have a backspacer. It's just something that I appreciate, especially when you have blades like this, because you don't want any crap in your pockets dinging up that edge because that could ruin your day when you do need your knife. So just a couple things to think on there. If you want a nice comparison, we'll go ahead and bring back out the Demco AD 20.5. This is a lot chunkier than the Demco AD 20.5, and it's a bit longer as well. Now, how about up against the Spyderco Manix 2? Now this is more like it. You're going to see a very similar blade profile, 
but this guy is definitely thicker on the scales. The scales are much thicker. Um, so if you like chunkier knives like I do because they just fit in the hand better, this is going to be a good one. 14C28N for the blade, titanium for the handle scales, titanium stamped. I'm pretty sure that's a titanium stamp pocket clip. And of course, titanium backspacer. Good stuff. Let's go ahead and check out the last one. And I've been saving this one for last because with all the tape on here, I feel like I almost have to do this on camera. Oh man, why did you do this to me? I, li listen, this is a lot of tape. And I don't want to just cut into this package because that could be <laughs> that could be bad. So, um, you know what? I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this unwrapped. Let's see where to begin. Where do I even begin? There we go. All right. We're off to the races. Wow, cool. So this is the Kubi Hide. This is the smallest knife out of the bunch, which means that it's going to be the most EDCable. I'm not sure if this pocket clip is steel or if it's titanium, but I wouldn't be surprised to learn if it was titanium. Uh, it is a front flipper as well, but this one also kind of goes over the top, which means that you can do that. Yeah, that's that's cool. G10 handle scales on the blade 14C28M, which I'm a huge fan of, and it's CM Designs. Uh, this pocket clip, I'm not the biggest fan of. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't necessarily. I, I I'll have to put it in pocket to find out. But I really like that deployment hole. That's very Spiderco esque. And is it something that you can access? Oh yeah. And even if it wasn't. You could, of course, hit it from the top. So that's really going to be great for top deployment, for front flipper deployment. Um, there we go. Uh, it's not a huge knife. This one is actually going to be shorter than the Demco 80 20.5, but it is quite a bit thicker. And again, that's not necessarily something that's hard to do because the Demco 80 20.5 is... You know, it's a thin knife, but I like this drop point style on the blade shape. I really like this uh, this deployment hole. It's nicely chamfered and it's and knocked down, so there's no sharp edges there. Uh, it feels nice in the hand. This is a very carry-friendly knife, I can tell already. You've got a big old lanyard hole right there, and of course it is an open back design, which allows us to show off the cutouts on the inside. The steel liners are shadow boxed, so that's cool. And just like the others, it's a single-sided captive pivot. Thank the Lord, I feel like we're moving into the 21st century. That action is pretty good, and all of these, I'm pretty positive, are indeed going to be running on bearings. What kind of bearings? I'm not sure. This is just my first impressions. This is me reacting to what these knives are like. So. I'm gonna get more information on these and then I'll be doing my grail or garbage rank reviews in the next couple of weeks. So that is that. I'm I'm actually very, very impressed with this guy. Um, I like the design so far. It's simple, it's carry friendly, it's going to meet a lot of knife laws. The action is good. It's a top flipper, which I don't have a ton of experience. I've only ever had one of those in the past. So yeah, we're going to see how much I enjoy these knives over the next couple of weeks before we send them back. And in the meantime, guys, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, boohoo, there's a button for you too. And if you wanna see more content just like it, make sure you hit subscribe. I'm Roll Shambo. I'll catch you on the flip side.